I'll tell you as soon as we're live. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Karen from the Epic Foundation. And thank you for joining us today on our Zebra Table Talks. This is our first Zebra Table Talk. And I am so excited to launch this today and to be here with you today. I would like to introduce you to our first talk, which is what is your superpower? And I'm going to briefly introduce our facilitator today. She's going to be the one moderating today's discussion. This is Dr. Serena, everyone, psychotherapist and professor and chronic pain expert. I would like to introduce you to her. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Serena, for facilitating this discussion. And I'll go ahead and hand it over to you so we can get started and, you know, let people know what, what this superpower thing is all about. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Karen. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for having me, actually. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, first, before we begin into the actual discussion about the superpower thing, it would be great if all of you can introduce yourselves. So um, I will just call out your first name. And then if you want to just give an introduction, a brief introduction, that would be great. So Kim, do you want to go first? Uh, Kim Eisendrath, sorry, <laughs> if you want to go first. Oh, you're on mute. Of course I am. Um, <laughs> I'm Kim Eisendrath. Um, I am a zebra parent and um, I'm also a yoga instructor and um, do somatic trauma work. So um, I've, I've run the full gamut of being through all of, all of uh, invisible chronic illnesses. So. Great, welcome. What about Kim Brooks? Yes, the other Kim. <laughs> Kim Brooks Vandenberg, and I am the on the executive board as, as a treasurer for the Epic Foundation. I'm based in Kansas City. And by trade, I'm a lead chain specialist in my real job too. But it's such a pleasure to be here and such a great cause. So welcome everyone and glad you could participate today. Great, thank you. Sydney, how about you? Hi, my name is Sydney. I am uh, the de Director of Community Engagement with the Epic Foundation. And uh, so I've been living with a myriad of chronic illnesses still to be determined for about 11 and a half years um, when I was about 15 or so that all started. But um, fast forward to now, um, I am in between undergrad and trying to go on to graduate school in the medical field so I can make a change in that a more tangible way itself as well as the advocacy world. Great, thank you, welcome. Brittany? Hi, my name is Brittany. I'm a youth advocate with EPIC and I've been living with chronic illness um, for the past three years and I wasn't properly diagnosed until the last year with Crohn's disease. Um, and I'm happy to be here today with everyone. So thank you for having me. Welcome, thank you. Jasmine? Uh, hi, my name is Jasmine Henderson. Um, I was uh, officially diagnosed with lupus and end-stage renal disease in 2006. Um, and I've, I've worked briefly, briefly uh, in the medical profession as an aide uh, for a little while. Great, thank you. Chanel? Hi, I'm Chanel Curtis, and I am currently the Director of Health Services Administration. I just graduated with my degree in the same field, Health Services Admin. Um, I have a very long history of chronic, chronic illness starting at 16 with Cushing's disease, and then a few, few years later with Addison's disease. So that's what I live with now. And I'm kind of in between figuring out if I'm gonna go to graduate school or go into 
my career. And much like Sydney, I'm very interested in the advocacy world and just helping people. That's why I'm here. And thank you for having me. Great. Welcome. Thank you, Mary. Hi, everybody. My name is Mary Pigeon. I'm the director of patient advocacy at the Epic Foundation, and I'm so thankful to found this organization. I myself am a um, mama of a child who, well, a child who's 19, <laughs> who has um, chronic illnesses, and we've been working with her illnesses for a long time. It's really since she was an infant, and um, I I dream of being a professional patient advocate and I'm on my way there now. Um, I've been in the healthcare industry for over 30 years in, in the non-clinical arena. So I have a very good background in insurances, uh, referrals and all sorts of um, hospital work and uh, physician practices. So it's a good fit for me. So I'm glad to be here today. Great, thank you, welcome. And you. Courtney. Hi, my name is Courtney. Um, I'm a youth intern at the Epic Foundation. Um, I work on the outreach team. Um, I'm the daughter of a chronically ill uh, person, patient, my mom, the director. Um, and so, yeah, I um, work with outreaching to youth with chronic illness and just trying to encourage them and give support. Great, thank you. Well, welcome. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for being here and taking some time out of your day to talk a little bit about the topic at hand and really just to, you know, give hope, you know, a little hope maybe to other people that are watching this and um, some things to think about as well. And our topic tonight is a super, you know, what's your superpower? And when Dr. Karen asked me um, to do this, you know, I, I really had to think a little bit about this because, you know, when I think of superpowers, I think of like um, the Avengers or something like that, right? So, mm. so I was thinking like, how would I define superpower in a human, like a, a, a regular human being? And so what came to me was that, you know, a superpower is really like a strength that is no pun intended, epic, because it is like, extraordinarily huge. Um, and it's something that really just kind of, you learn it or it carries you through um, your own journey. Um, and so for example, um, what I see as being a superpower of all of you is just the tenacity that you have and the perseverance of, you know, day by day being able to still move forward and work with whatever is there for yourself and trying to, you know, have a a quality of life that you want and being able to, to get that um, as much as possible. Um, so in that kind of spirit, um, it would be great if all of you can kind of talk a little bit about um, what you identify as your own superpower, um, you know, or epic strengths, if you want to call that, um, in terms of what you learned or in terms of something that you really want to embody more of too. So does anybody want to start us off? All right, Chanel, go ahead. Okay, so uh, when Dr. Thames proposed the question of, you know, what's your superpower? I am one who I actually kind of struggled a little bit uh, simply because of I guess how I think of chronic illness, how I think of disability, how I think of those things within the context of the society that we live in. Um, I sometimes feel like, and I'm not sure if anyone here can relate, but I sometimes feel like um, those who've never experienced chronic illness, those who do not identify as disabled or chronically ill, I often feel like we are maybe tokenized um, and used for inspiration purposes. Um, like a lot of times I feel like able-bodied people will look at us and just see us existing, just living our lives and be like, oh my goodness, you are so inspirational for just breathing. And I don't know how I feel about that. I go back and forth between feeling like, is that empowering? Is that tokenizing? So it took me a while to kind of think up what I believe to be my personal uh, superpower simply because I had to take my mind out of that frame of reference. But to answer the question, I would say intuition. And uh, that might be something that we can all relate to because a lot of times we 
are the first to notice things going wrong with ourselves. And we're like screaming into the medical void to get doctors to listen to us. And, you know, we have our, we're writing down our symptoms or we're taking notes, we're taking pictures. And it's like, not until you reach this threshold of proof does a medical professional believe you. But we almost always know to begin with that something is wrong. So I think intuition for myself, and I'm absolutely positive that amongst this panel, I'm sure other people would probably say the same. Yeah, do, do other people agree that that's kind of part of their own superpower too? And at least an element of it? Okay, yeah, that's a great one. Brittany? I actually agree like 110%. As I said in the beginning, you know, I had not been diagnosed properly. I started having symptoms of Crohn's disease when I was 15 years old. And at first my parents didn't even believe me. They wouldn't even let me go to a doctor. I was positive that I had never experienced anything like this in my life before and that I needed to see a medical professional. So that took months of convincing them to even get me to a doctor. And then once I got to a doctor, she took one look at me and she told me I had IBS. And then after treatment from her that actually ended up backfiring, I stopped going to her and I went to a doctor who my friend had gone to. And she was like, so you've had no tests done? And I was like, no. She's like, and she put you on medication with no tests. And I was like, yes. And she was like, we need to get you tested. So I went through lots of testing, very extensive testing. And that's when she came back and told me that I had ulcerative colitis. And then um, after about a year of treatment with ulcerative colitis and it did not get better, I went back for more testing. And that's when they finally told me that the final diagnosis was Crohn's disease. So I went from having a disease that had you know, no physical symptoms to a disease that could change my life drastically. You know, there are lots of things that can happen with Crohn's disease. Um, and I realized through all of that, that I really needed to trust myself and that I was the only person who knew truly what I needed in life. And that if I spent my whole life listening to what other people's opinions were about my body and what I was going through, I was going to get nowhere. I was going to get nowhere. And so what you just said totally speaks to me. And I honestly hadn't even thought about it until you just said it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you have like another um, superpower that you would identify for yourself or is intuition like the, the encompasses that for you? Um, that definitely is a part of it. But um, when I thought of my first superpower, the immediate thing that I thought of was empathy because mm -hmm. I had gained, I was always a very empathetic person. I always cared for other people, but when I became ill, I realized how much I took for granted in life and I realized that a lot of people go through a lot of things and that a lot of people struggle and I gained a whole new understanding of people who just struggle on a daily basis and my heart goes out to those people and so like even on issues that have nothing to do with chronic illness things like homelessness or things like closely related, like addiction, you know, things like that. I have a whole new understanding of just that daily struggle of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Wow. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't see the hands going up, but I know Dr. Karen, you had your hand up. Yes. I, I just wanted to say really quick um, and thank you again, everyone for being here. I wanted to say that I can definitely identify with both of those superpowers. And yes, um, you know, Chanel, just to say real quick, you bring up such a great point because we don't think about the intuition that we develop through dealing with this. You know, there's an article on our website and I also, um, we also have a YouTube video that talks about being the captain of your own ship. And I know Brittany and I have talked about this pretty extensively as well, um, that 
you know, we learn to see ourselves as the directors of our own medical care. And that essentially, instead of doctors owning what happens with us, they're a part of our team. And you can only develop that sort of purview by understanding that your intuition is what keeps us alive. Uh, you know, uh, some of us on here, including myself, live with life-threatening illness and have survived um, other illnesses that, you know, were life-threatening or, you know, uh, basically brought us down. And we had to fight. And it was through intuition, because how many of us have heard it's all in your head? You know, um, I had a neurologist tell me, you're a psychologist. Don't you know that it's psychosomatic? Don't you know that, you know, you're making all this up? You should know this. You're a doctor. And yet I was dying. And so the intuition, absolutely spot on. Empathy as well. And then I'll just add one thing, tenacity. I know that sounds so cliche, but I just say that we own it. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, today kicked my butt. <laughs> this these past few weeks have been kicking my butt. And there are days that I cannot even get out of bed. And there are days that I'm like, what the heck is going to happen in my life right now? I don't even know if I'm going to survive this. But some type of way, you just keep going, right? Because we're all sitting here. So um, I'm not going to keep rambling, but that's, that's just what I wanted to say about that. Thank you for calling me. Hey, thank you. Jasmine? Um, I, uh, first I wanted to say, um, to Brittany, I think that speaks volumes that even though you had found yourself in a very difficult situation, um, it, it caused you to think about others more instead of just centering in and focusing on the negative and, and mm -hmm. how, um, this disorder was affecting your life. First of all, um, and then I wanted to tag on to Chanel um, saying uh, intuition. That's that that's an incredible superpower. It's definitely not one that I possess. Um, I think that as you start, if you weren't born with your um, illness, um, coming to discover it, you you tend to deny that intuition. Um, I'm. 13 years in and I'm there's still a lot of symptoms and stuff that I deny when I don't feel like not feeling good so um the fact that that um you embrace that intuition that's that's amazing Jasmine do you have a um a, a superpower that you can identify for yourself from your own journey um I I was saying that my superpower is patience, mm -hmm. um, that my avatar is queen patience. Um, not necessarily because of, you know, you, you come across people that give you the flux because they don't understand what's going on with you, but more so learning to have patience with myself. When I come across those times where my body is like, that's it, I'm done today, just stop. You know, I, I have to learn to have patience with myself and say, okay, and listen to it um, and say, I, I can pick this up tomorrow or maybe the day after that, you know, and not get frustrated. Yeah. So listening to your body and just kind of working, befriending it too. It's what it sounds like with that. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. Thank you. Sydney. Yeah. So I guess uh, going back onto the uh, intuition, empathy, I have to fully, fully agree with those as well. Um, I was just starting 10th grade when kind of this whole chronic illness thing started. And for me, it actually it started like overnight. I went on a run and then something happened. And that was like, that was what happened. Um, and everyone just kind of said like, oh, well, you know, you were dehydrated that day because that's all we could trace it back to. But um I knew, like, no, I'd been a runner for eight years prior to that, too, and I'd been dehydrated, and so that wasn't going to be the cause, um, so 
I'd agree with the intuition for sure. It still took about about five years until I went to my first doctor who actually validated anything I said. Um, they started going to doctors a little by little, but it was five years until even the first ounce of validation. Um, and from there, it's still been a whirlwind of back and forth. And I thought this was the right doctor. I thought he or she was completely right. Now we're on a whole different track. Um, so I think like what Chanel, what you were saying about intuition, if if we didn't have that, we would be just so lost when the people who are guiding you in the first place are kind of guiding you in every direction also. Um, also, I agree with empathy. Um, I'm definitely not always perfect about it, but I think it's given me the concept that if people, just to keep in mind, if people don't always know what I'm going through, it's a reminder that I don't know what they're going through as well. So um, one of the things I do as a, as a job kind of in between right now is work at um, a COVID test site and there's can be 2000 cars that come through in a day. And there are people that just sometimes seem a little bit off or maybe just not in the best mood. And it's a lot of people to see in one day, but to them, they're just seeing us, you know, we're seeing a lot. They're just seeing one person who's helping them. And it's really easy. I think sometimes to jump on someone and be like, why'd they do that with the vial? <laughs> Cause it's, we basically facilitate them self-administering. Um, these really silly little things, but I think my own chronic illness and it being invisible has taught me to hold on, wait a moment. Like, I don't know what they're dealing with, what appointment they just came from. Maybe they have a family member who just found out news. Maybe they aren't getting the news that they wanted or didn't want. So I, I want to just, just agree to both those, the intuition, the empathy, and how much I relate as well. Um, I think for myself, it's not as much as a one-worded thing, but a lot of people have said, especially with this being so many years and drawn out uh, and not having, I don't have like a really specific correct diagnosis. I have a whole bunch of umbrella diagnoses instead. Um, with it being so drawn out, I've been more or less told by a lot of doctors like, um, just learn to accept it, move on, this will be your life. And to an extent, I understand that, that like, yes, going every day, day to day, you have to find a way to go day to day or else that will just be it. And sometimes those are the days where it's just it. But I think for me that my superpower would still be that while I can simultaneously accept that this is the current situation and it's not great right now and hasn't been that at the same time I'm not I don't want to normalize it and I'm going to remember what it was like before that day where everything went wrong so I think my superpower and in conclusion here to that rambling would be um uh despite just such a drawn out process that I can, I can recall, and it's important to me to remember what it was like to be just a happy, healthy kid. And, um, and that my goal is to get as closely, as close back to that as possible. I don't want to normalize this, so. Yeah, so, so is it appropriate to say that you're determined? Um, yeah, I guess that, that word would work, um, determined. Um, I think sometimes, I, you know, I still have days like everyone else where it's just like, I'm not determined today, <laughs> you know, like today is a, a hard one. And, but in the big picture, it's like, I remember how fun it was when, you know, our friend said, Hey, want to go see a movie? And I was just like, sure, let's go. And today I can't do that. So I think it's the ability to re remember that and kind of remember how much meaning there was to that ability to live spontaneously and just a little bit more care with more um, more carefree um, and uh, still remember that and kind of aim towards that so yeah to be determined to get back to that I know that of course I'll be changed 
even if I were to become a hundred percent like physically healthy again, like I think we could all say we've been changed by this experience and it's traumatic in ways what a lot of us have gone through. So even with that, um, but I don't want to forget what it was like as much as the easy way out might be just to accept and move on. Mm -hmm. So I think remembering who we, who we are and we are like inside despite everything going on. So it almost sounds like a, a combination of determined hope. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mary. Thank you so much, Sydney. You remind me so much of my daughter. Um, my, she's 19 and it's an incredible journey um, to be her mom and her mama warrior. She um, you know, has been sick since she was little, but more, you know, when she was about six, her, her condition started to really develop serious symptoms, GI symptoms and all kinds of symptoms. But um, just you know genetic 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 disorder and it, it manifests itself in so many different ways and it's just going to get progressively worse as time goes on but you, you're describing exactly what she says all the time she, you know she wants it to be like it be was before but she can't um necessarily go back so we always look for, to the future and what that's going to look like for her so I just continue to, you know, use my warrior strength in my faith and just keep going forward and knowing that her purpose is greater than her illness. So someday it's going to come, it's going to come to light for her and she'll see what it's going to be like. And that's what, that's all I can say. Otherwise I also think I'll just start crying. <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you about your own superpower? No, um, no, I mean, it's just my faith, I think, in, in having strength and using my skills and everything I learned to help other people. Yeah. That's really what it boils down to. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim. Oh, wait, sorry, both of you were there. <laughs> so either of you can go <laughs> and then the other one can go. Kim, you mind if I go? <laughs> all right. So I'm looking at hearing all these great superpowers and, and I can, I, it just resonates with me as the other side, as maybe the caregiver. I had a mom pass from breast cancer, a dad passed from a stroke, daughter born with a cleft palate, uh, a spouse also recently had severe surgery also. So hearing all these things as far as patience, tenacity, that intuition, empathy and determination is sometimes you have to fill in that gap for that person you're caring for or your loved one when they may not have it. And you have to be their spokesperson. You have to fight for on their behalf or inquire on their behalf about certain medical things they wanna place on your loved one. And they may not have the energy to even answer the question. You have to step in there and answer for them. And I really love uh, the warrior faith that Mary, Mary had. Because uh, sometimes that's what you need to also, when you see that love, when you care so much about them and you see them in that state, you got to, you know, pull up that faith to help encourage them as well as yourself that, you know, you're going to help them get through it and also help fight for them on their behalf. Uh, I call myself Black Starlight because I like to bring positive energy to the table as also uh, a power of encouragement, I think is one of my superpowers. Uh, as well as um, the resilience, spirit of resilience. And, and it was hard when I first had to think about it as well and, and just think, what do people say when, when I'm with them or friends and so on and so forth? Um, I said, okay, I think these are some of the things I think I resonate with, but uh, I admire all of you and I can relate to just all those superpowers that you stated. And, and I know it's not easy, but just hearing your stories, just let me see uh, I don't know if you know, but you're really exuberant in all those superpowers as you state what you're sharing with your stories. So I just wanted to share that from a different perspective um, that we all can relate to these and also um, implement them in our own way based on how we're being used in that situation. Great. Thank you, Kim. How about we now go to the other Kim? Um, thank you, everyone, for sharing your wisdom and um, 
all of your stories resonate with me very, very deeply. And um, I'd like to go back to Chanel on intuition um, and Brittany with empathy. Um, I, I believe intuition um, is a driving force for all of us. Um, my superhero name is Calm Storm, but um, it wasn't always that way. I, I resonate really strongly with um, Warrior Mom because when my daughter was first misdiagnosed, um, long before she was diagnosed with what she actually, her chronic illness. Um, she used to joke that um, I'd be afraid of you if, if I met you because um, I did not, and I'm sure Kim and Mary, you're, you're the same way. You, you don't stop until you get the answer and you're a bulldog um, for your loved ones. And that's what we do. Um, I've had to go through my own arc to get to be calm um, and then Sydney, when you talk about, um, who you appear to be on the outside, now that I'm a yogi, um, it's all about who you are on the inside and what your, what your light tells you what you are versus, um, this meat suit, I guess, that you're wearing that sometimes often fails you and, but that's not who you are. And, um, and I also think, um, us as caregivers, holding space for those who are struggling in their physical body is so important. And, and we can't fix, we can't fix your chronic illness, but if we can just sit and hold your hand and, and be there for you and, and say, I understand. And, um, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I, I'm holding space for you and we're, I'm just here for you. And, um, always go back to finding your center. And um, I will never, ever, ever stop being a warrior mom, even though I'm so fortunate and I know how blessed I am that my daughter is doing fabulous. And, um, you know, she is not letting her chronic illness define her. And that was a big part as a caregiver of my story is I had to let go of her story and our story and um, it's a struggle every single day. Um, and there are cathartic things that happen, like we were able to donate her wheelchair, um, which was beautiful because she doesn't need it anymore and let someone else have it. But um, it's not part of our story anymore. Um, but so many of us are, that's where I'm at, fortunately, but it's something the trauma of what happened sits so deep inside of us. So I'm just holding space for all of you who, live in your meat suit that doesn't work for you, but that's not who you are. You're the light on the inside. So Kim, it sounds like, <clears throat> excuse me, your uh, super power is being a warrior mom. Warrior mom. And now that I'm, I'm calm. I'm the calm. I've, okay. I've moved. I'm still a warrior mom, but I'm, um, I'm able to be calm and centered during all of this because we've been able to move to a different place, but that's not the situation for everybody. So I'm able to hold space for all of you who are not, um, not where I'm at and, but I've been there. So I understand, like, I really, really understand. Thanks for sharing that. Great. Courtney, do you want to say anything? Yeah. Um, so I would say my superpower is probably um, empathy as well. Um, I relate to that, you know, having a loved one with chronic illness, um, just being hyper aware of ableism and making sure that I'm not like showing any ableist like characteristics, maybe or like treating someone like um, differently or unfairly. Um, and just yeah. Okay. Thank you. So it sounds like yours is also empathy is what I hear. And also uh, trying not to stigmatize is the other piece of that. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to go through um, some of the things that I listed that all of you have said. And, you know, as I'm reading through these characteristics, these superpowers, um, I I'm hoping that you will um, think about, you know, how, how can you or how, what kind of advice or what kind of guidance might you give some of our listeners about how they can develop this or 
you know, maybe where to look for it or, um, you know, just to get a little bit more of it. Because I think one of the things that happens, um, especially with chronic illnesses and invisible illnesses is that, you know, and some of you have mentioned this, that, that validation is so important. Um, you know, that your experience is your experience and nobody can tell you that you're not experiencing it because you know you are experiencing it. Um, so what might you suggest to listeners about these different superpowers that you came up with in terms of you know, maybe how to go about developing them or ways that they can find out more about them? And I see Dr. Karen like automatically jumped on that. So we're going to go to you first. Of course I did. Um, I'm sitting here trying not to let everybody see me cry because I'm like streaming tears here. I'm just so moved um, by everything that I'm hearing here. And, um, you know, I just think it's um, so beautiful not to be corny that you guys have left yourselves vulnerable to open up about your own personal stories. Um, as a trauma specialist and, and as a person who, you know, feel that, feels that um, chronic illness has uh, brought trauma into my own personal life, um, I will say that I believe that there's power in our voices and there's power in our stories. And um, each one of us has a story and sometimes that story does evolve and change over time. And um, the way that we tell our story is so impactful. So I wanna say that first and foremost, I was very moved by all of that. So I'm sitting here crying like a baby. Well, not really, but what I will say is I, I just wanted to point out that I think when we talk about superpowers, and I know that this was my experience, that sometimes people have somewhat even a visceral reaction to that because it sometimes to others implies that you're okay with what you're going through, that it's not a hardship, it's not something that has brought trauma into your life, you know, and that speaks to something that Chanel had said earlier, um, you know, in terms of being tokenized and being the inspirational story. Sometimes you don't want to be the inspirational story. Sometimes you just want to be able to get out of bed. <laughs> so, you know, I, I can definitely understand that. So with that said, I think it's 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 a very difficult thing to sort of process in your own mind in terms of owning a superpower because you think it means that you're okay with that trauma. And what I want to say is that I don't believe that owning a superpower is incongruent with or opposite of being mindful of whatever space you're in. And that can change. It's not a linear process. It really isn't. It's very cyclical. And that can change from day to day. And it can change from moment to moment. Today, I was a complete wreck. I mean, I just, I could not hold it together to save my life. And I'm just being completely honest. It was a very difficult day. Um, yesterday, I felt like a rock star. Um, you know, because I was like, oh, I got this, you know. And it, it, it felt really good. But what I'm learning in terms of that inner light and being mindful is just being okay with whatever space I'm in. And if I own a superpower, if I own empathy, if I own tenacity, it doesn't mean that there's not gonna be hard days. So if I'm making any sense, I, I want our audience to know that you can own those strengths and not deny your reality at the same time. That I can say, you know, openly that I struggle today, you know, and I struggled a lot, you know, and here I am the executive director of a foundation that gives people hope, but that's not anti-hope to say that I struggled. You can say that and still own the fact that you're tenacious and that you're resilient and that you lived, literally, you survived another day. So, um, you know, that's all I'll say about that. Thank you. 
Thanks for your vulnerability, Dr. Karen. That was wonderful. And, and yeah, I think it's an important point too to bring up that you can, you can have both present at the same time. One does not uh, knock out the other because you know, kind of going with what I said a few minutes ago, that's the reality of your experience is that that's validating to you. And at the same time, there's also something that's pulling you through that as well. It, it's not, it is something else that's pulling you through that experience to get to the other side, you know, like what Sydney had mentioned earlier about that. Um, so yeah, let's uh, go to the rest of you to see what thoughts you have. Kim, did you, I saw yours up first. Kim, uh, Eisendraft, I had you up first. Um, there's so much, so many thoughts that are going through my head right now. Um, I think Serena, what you said about validation, um, <clears throat> is just so important because it means that you've been heard and you've been seen. And so many of us, those of you with invisible chronic illnesses are not seen and you're not, um, just because you look okay, you're not being, you feel like you're not being heard. And, um, what Karen said about answering a you can be in chronic pain, you can be not feeling well, um, and you can be um, a superhero to yourself. And the, that word and is really powerful because you can hold space for both of those things. And I think it's really important to do that. Um, I know from a caregiver standpoint, um, self-care is super important and to take moments to yourself. But as someone living with chronic illness, it's really also important that you um, have fun and find what brings you pleasure in life. But I think holding the opposites and that duality of um, you can be suffering and you can still be happy are super important. Um, you can not feel like getting out of bed, but you can still find things to be grateful for. So I think there's a duality and holding space for both things. Um, you know, I think just because you are a superhero to yourself and doesn't mean that you don't struggle every day also because as a caregiver i know what it's like to to watch someone i love more than anything to be in chronic pain and you know every step that she takes hurts so i get that and you know if it's too humid out i get the fact that you know i'm the annoying mother that's like drink some water i don't want you to pass out here's some salt um, so I get that of, of being a caretaker, but then also honoring that, you know, my daughter just wants to be 18. So there's a lot of duality to all of this. And I think it's really important to honor, um, both of those for you. And I think I went off on a tangent somewhere, but so. <laughs> well, we did have one question and I just wanted to, um, bring it up here. Uh, so the comment was, thank you so much for being transparent. Uh, and the question was, does your family see your superpower the same as you? And this goes to Dr. Karen. Um, do they acknowledge it? Sorry, it took me a second to unmute myself. Um, wow, that's, that's a pretty powerful question. Mm -hmm. And um, something that, um, I guess I, I think about unconsciously, but I have never been asked that question before. So this is a first. Um, I would say yes. Um, but I think that, you know, because uh, I've been on the other side, you know, my, in terms of uh, my mother passed away from Lewy body dementia a couple years ago. And so um, I was on the caregiver end um, on, on that side and I think um, you know that everyone experiences it in different ways depending on your role and I learned that when I was a caregiver um, of, of my mom but coming back to the question I think uh, I brought that up because I think the answer is yes but I think that each of them has a story and a version of how they see me as well. So they might see me as tenacious, but for different reasons, because, you know, they're not in my body, but it's, you know, the way that they experience me as the loved one or the caregiver. Um, 
I, I had a lot of mother guilt for a while because I know that, you know, my children, um, Courtney's on right now, and then I have a 10 year old named Madison that, um, you know, they experienced me in very different ways. Uh, Courtney had me uh, relatively healthy for about eight years, seven or eight years of her life. Whereas, um, turns out I had my illness when I was, since I was, before I was pregnant with Madison. So all that Madison knows is what the new version of me, because I, I believe that I will never go back to the old version of me. And I don't even know what the future version of me will look like, but I'm definitely changed. But, you know, she's experienced me as always having had chronic illness. So I believe that each of them has a different story. You know, Courtney, I, I, and I can't speak for her, but, you know, just based on conversations and based on my experience of my family, you know, I think uh, it, it was, it, it's been very difficult to have me fully functional. And then all of a sudden in the fourth grade, when she was in the fourth grade, to only be able to spend time with me when I was in the bed. And because of that, you know, I think for them, it would be hard to, you know, define mom as tenacious. They just want mom, you know? Um, and, and my husband is, uh, he's my, he's my fighter. <laughs> he fights for me, you know, if, if I'm, if I don't have a voice, um, so, you know, I would define him as tenacious and a fighter and a warrior. And, um, I believe that he would say that I'm tenacious as well and have empathy and all the things I define for myself, but again, experience from his perspective as my husband. So I don't know if that makes any sense. I think that they're able to identify it, but it just, it's, it's from a different lens is basically, my long-winded way of saying that. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Well, I would be curious to know um, for the rest of you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what about for those of you that have chronic illness and invisible illnesses, does your family see the same superpower that you do? Do they acknowledge that as part of who you are? Okay, I see so many hands up and I'm not sure if you're answering the first question or the second question that I just posed. So I'm just gonna call on you and then you tell me which question you're gonna answer. And this can also go for those of you that are caregivers too, that you know have shared a superpower. Does, does um, your family see that in you as well? So we're gonna go to Kim Brooks first. Oh, hey, I put my hand back. It looks like you asked a new question, but... <laughs> Uh, my 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 email is up for your question about how do you know, and it probably ties into this. You know, how do you know, and how do you cultivate? I believe everyone listening, you know, who watches this has some aspect of the things that were mentioned as superpowers. It just may be at a different degree. If you journal and look back at your past journals through the years and see some of the things you uh, overcame or that are over now, that's one sign. And you can probably pinpoint out of those those list of uh, superpowers what you probably exhibited during that time. And then I was going to say, ask your family and friends, what do you think my superpower is? Uh, I, you know, and I, I like when Karen, Dr. Karen said it depends on the lens you see in because I'm the big sister, so my siblings like like well, you're bossy, <laughs> but they also will see that I am very tenacious uh, when I'm trying to get the answers, or I'm also very. Um, to make sure they take care of the person that we're trying to take care of and get the right medical care and so on and so forth. Um, so that was the thing I wanted to share is, you know, look back at your journals and see what you have there and also ask your family and friends. And sometimes it's hard for you to see it within yourself. So ask those who are close to you, what do they see in you? You may be surprised. I think it's sometimes hard for us to, to highlight the great things in ourselves. Um, so, you know, I will start with there. So that's what I would say. Great, yeah, thank you. Sydney, do you wanna go next? Uh, which which one am I going after? There are a few which, questions. Which, yeah, whichever one you'd like. So, you know, how do you um, develop your superpower or um, what your, you know, does your family see the same superpower? Do they acknowledge it? Either or, it's fine. Well, I think I could kind of tie them in actually. So um, going off of what was first kind of said, the duality of, um, 
kind of like super superpower versus like uh, tokenism and like can you be happy and sad all at the same time and all those issues and that actually was what first came up when we even started this discussion. I was pretty hesitant actually about the whole superpower concept of like, I, I don't have a superpower, like I, that's tokenism more or less. And um, like, I'm not just gonna say like, I'm brave because I, I made it through another, another surgery or something. Um, like to me, it took a long time to figure out what I could see as a superpower, but, so I guess going off of that, um, that first point of the duality, um, I just wanted to touch on that, that uh, I think there's aspects to what I said that could come off maybe as pessimistic a little bit, like, oh, well, you're still, you're still living in like what you were and that's not gonna be, that's not going to be the case anymore. Um, so I guess just to clarify on that, um, like it was said, it's possible to, to kind of live in both spaces and it's not easy. There's definitely times where like, it's not easy by any means to live in both spaces. But I think what kept me going or able to live in both spaces of like, I don't know if I'll ever get back to that point or I don't know if there's any possibility or maybe there's a 1% possibility or something. Is it really worth it if I'm waiting on 1% is like little things even. I, I had one period of time out of uh, 11 and a half years now, um, right before I was a senior in college and I tried a really experimental treatment that had never been done in the US. So you can just imagine the fighting that took to get there. Um, and it worked and it was amazing. And so that little bit um, of time of feeling completely, you know, quote unquote normal again, feeling like my healthy normal self again was a reminder of I guess why I keep going because maybe one day I can get back to that and same goes for anyone else who's in those shoes um it was amazing because you know I, I remembered and then it was like this really is true so many people had put it in my head that that this was in my head and then when I could again say no I'm feeling the difference right now it just it validated it for me and then it kind of showed it to to the doctors too like like how different like I, I was at Disneyland a week later and I could never be doing that right now um Disneyland metaphorically and figuratively it was amazing and it didn't last um I became desensitized to that treatment um didn't last but I think that's one thing that a way that it uh that kind of superpower even though it can be a little bit of living in the past while the future at the same time um has allowed me to keep going um even on really hard days and as far as like family what they see um I do live back at home right now because of all of this and I would say the hit sometimes it drives them crazy. <laughs> sometimes they do feel like, like let's stop talking about that. That was the past. Um, and like doc, uh, Dr. Karen had said, um, it's different. They're seeing the same thing, but through a different lens. So while I know they care and they love me, um, I want to keep talking about like, remember when I used to be able to do this and I really want to do that again. There was a marathon on TV today. I want to be able to be like them. Um, and they're like, we, we know you live with this. Like you don't have to talk about it all day. Um, so I think it's, I, I agree. It's the a lens situation and perspective of they understand and they get it. And they watched me go from completely happy and healthy to kind of the other side really quickly um, and then watched it kind of spiral um, and so yeah I would agree that it's we all can see these different characteristics in one another but only at the level of your own perspective and that's just another thing maybe to keep in mind so, yeah that's great thank you Sydney Chanel Wow. Okay. So I have also been 
writing down some things that I noticed that they kind of connect to, to both questions kind of. Um, I think when, when you opened the, the whole discussion, Dr. Sherni, you talked about the Avengers. Now I'm a huge MCU fan. So I believe that I can speak on this in an educated manner. But one thing that I wrote down, a few things that I wrote down is that I've been noticing like a common thread in all of our discussions about how our experience is nuanced. And I think, I know for us that live with chronic illness, that's not like a surprise, but for some people that don't, um, and especially people who don't interact daily with people that live with chronic illness, I don't think that they think that way. Um, we don't have, we don't have a lot of representation. So even in the MCU, for example, I'm a huge MCU fan and they have included women, they've included black people, they've included brown people, but there are still experiences that we don't see. I mean, not just the MCU, but in media across the board, we barely see representation of ourselves. And then oftentimes when we do see that representation, it is a very, again, tokenized, very monolithic uh, type of representation. And almost always it's like a sidekick or somebody that helps move the antagonist story forward. So we're never seen as, we're never seen as super. I don't remember seeing really a very visibly disabled person as a superhero where their disability wasn't kind of just uh, stigmatized in a certain way. Um, I have not seen a lot of, and just people in general in media that were disabled and also a protagonist with a nuanced storyline. And I think for me, that tied into the question of like, do people, how do people see you and, and how do you identify those things in yourself? And honestly, I think that the more that we do things like this, but the more that we really uh, talk about all of our feelings and not just the ones that fit into the nice little box that, you know, a lot of able-bodied people like to put us in, like, oh my gosh, look, she's an inspiration. And like Dr. Karen said on those days, I, like, I don't want to get out of bed today, but somehow I'm inspiring you. Tell me how that works. And a lot of times I have had people, because I'm very much a person who I champion social justice, not just for uh, people with disabilities, but all people at all intersections of marginalized experiences. And so a lot of times I have lost friends because they find me as angry. And I just want to say, especially to Sydney, because Sydney really was speaking about her experience and how she's like, what I'm hearing is like, you know, I'm angry, I'm upset. And maybe I'm even bitter about the fact that one day I was okay. And one day I was not. And I just wanted to speak to the fact that there is validity in anger. Uh, almost every single uh a revolutionary moment in this country and every country across the world has started with anger. So that is incredibly valid. And I think that there's a lot of times where people do not see uh, what I see in myself, but there's even more times where I don't see what people see in me. And I'm in this place of denial simply because when I look out and I look to media, cause I spend a lot of time consuming media, I don't see a lot of nuanced, uh, tellings of our experience. So I would say that regardless of, even if people are telling you that uh, the things that they see in you are not great or not inspirational today or make them feel uncomfortable, um, I think that's incredibly valid. And I think it takes a lot of self-reflection to, to, to be able to sit and say, you know, you know what, I'm angry, but you know what? My anger is important and I can be angry today but I can take that anger and build that into tenacity, into the empathy, into, cause you can take things that feel negative on the inside, process them, unpack them, deal with them, and then turn them outward so that they not only help you, but help others and then help others see you in the nuanced way that you live. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. So we've only got a few minutes left here and I do wanna give, um, the people an opportunity to speak that had their hands raised up for a while. So Brittany, if you want to go next. Yeah, so I um, 
the first thing I wanted to say is that I totally agree with the lens thing that, you know, other people are going to see what we see as superpowers as maybe a hindrance, um, particularly because um, I think the way we act might affect them in a certain way that we don't really think about. So, for example, the superpower that Shanaha brought up, um, my mother probably thinks that I'm a pain in the you know what, um, because I would not stop. I would not stop. I was like, I am sick. I need to see a doctor. I am sick. I need to see a doctor. And she is a very logical person. She couldn't see anything wrong with me. And she just didn't believe me. And so um, I think that she probably thinks that, you know, that is like not a great thing because it bugs her. But for me, it was life changing and it is life changing. Um, and so another thing that I wanted to talk about going off of that was I wanted to say thank you to the caregivers who are on this call personally, because um, as somebody who was 15 years old and didn't have anybody to stick up for me when I was sick, sorry, I'm getting emotional. Um, it was hard and I know that the people who are around you really appreciate what you've done for them, even if they might not tell you all the time. And I want to tell you that you are amazing and thank you for doing everything that you do for the people around you because you don't have to, you really don't, but you choose to. And that's life changing for not just you, but the people around you. Thanks for sharing that, Brittany. Yeah. Um, Mary, do you wanna go next? I can never find that mute button. <laughs> so yes, I, I, Brittany, you're a doll. You really are. Um, and, and it kind of leads me right to what I'm going to say, because the, the one thing you got to do is, is believe your child, your child or your per the person that you're um, caring for, because you really don't know what they're feeling and it's hard to, to see it, especially when it, it's an invisible illness. So it was hard. I mean, my daughter was, just she was a young teenager and, and and she started you know sixth grade seventh grade and on she's starting to complain of stomach aches and I'm like oh and everybody's like oh you're fine suck it up and you you really really have to take that any any even a little tiny symptom and really listen and as time went on her symptoms kept you know, kept manifesting themselves into other things. Her knees were swollen or she kept having, kept having headaches and we're like, oh, you're just stressed out. You know, the doctors would say, oh, you're just stressed out because you're in a new school. Just relax and have some aromatherapy and you'll be fine. And it was just incredible. And, and it really wasn't well, quite an eye opener for us. And, and as I continued to help her through the system, it was incredible how um, negligent and, and, and no offense to any prof uh, medical professionals, but how negligent in some cases they were um, telling her she was anorexic, telling her she had growing pains and, and telling her that it was just stress and never really focusing on, on exactly what symptoms she was experiencing how real they were so I totally appreciate what you're saying and and thank goodness I really you know honed in on her her issues quickly but it's needless to say didn't help very much because it took years and years for us to finally figure out what's going on and and there it was you know started in the one ER I said I'm not leaving until you admit her and you know what I mean? It's like, you are going to admit her, figure out what's going on. And that was the turning point, finally, that um, helped us get some ideas. And, you know, the more you talk to people, the more, you know, you say, oh, your daughter has that. Oh, you, you, you have somebody, you know, somebody, uh, you know, somebody who knows somebody, give me their name. I'll talk to them. <laughs> and you just kind of keep going on and on. So my biggest recommendation is to first and foremost, you know, help be helpful in being a listening ear and really start being a private investigator, if you will, for your, for your um, child or your parent or your friend, whoever it is, and, and, and really be that person to, to advocate, which is what I had to do. And I really think that um, more people need 
people like that in their life and and to be the listener and to really say you know what you're struggling today let me help you let me make those phone calls for you let me call the doctors let me schedule your appointments those are the things that sounds kind of small but for somebody who is is bedridden they can't do it by themselves and they need that support and i think the epic foundation is a perfect place for that to happen where we can share our expertise and our our listening ear to those those that need it I really think it's a great place to start. And I, and I would encourage anyone to reach out to the Epic Foundation or to someone close to you and ask for help and just keep, just keep searching, searching for answers until you get them. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. absolutely. Thank you for sharing sure. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. advocacy is really important. Yeah. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for being here today and for sharing uh, your superpower and your stories with us. It's really great to hear, you know, your own journey and just what it took for you to be able to get what you need, um, which is often so hard in the system that we have these days. So I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Karen, who can then. Um, do whatever she needs to do. Yeah, I just want to thank all of you again for being so vulnerable, sharing your stories. I think that each one of you, I know you personally, and I definitely see your superpowers. And even for anyone who said, me, I don't have a superpower you know that I came back and said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> um, so I, I, thank, I thank all of you from the caregiver perspective and from the patient perspective. And I thank you, Dr. Serena, for leading such an impactful discussion because it's through our stories and it's through these conversations that we really validate our experiences at, for ourselves and for each other. And so I don't take this for granted at all. I thank all of you and together we are epic. That's all I wanna say, thank you. Thank you everyone.